I'm Chris Hopkins. We started this company in my basement 18 years ago with my brother Michael, my other brother Mark, with Matt and a few other folks. Uh, September 10, 2001. Something really big happened the next day and the basement flooded. So we had to, you know, change course. 18 years later, we're probably one of the largest providers of voice and data services to businesses in southeastern Michigan. We have com companies all over the world, but our footprint, or the main focus is here. We do voice, internet, uh, cloud phone systems, managed IT services, security cloud compute, infrastructure, network design for small to medium-sized businesses and some enterprise tier one suppliers. So I was talking with uh, one of my friends here, Mark Bigelow, who owns the mortgage company in the back, Mark's the CEO of Homeland USA. He just refinanced my home, thank you very much. So I have the same home and it's costing a lot less and mom's happy, so. If you need a mortgage, that's your man. Uh, hopefully there's no other folks like that in here. Um, but what we talked about was, it's, you know, instead of talking about my company, I always thought that it would be better instead of salespeople coming and selling to salespeople. I mean, raise your hand if you're a salesperson. Everyone should raise their hand, <laughs> right? Including me. It would be better if you came to these meetings or events looking to give somebody business as opposed to get it. If you give business, it's going to come back to you. Find something, you know, pick Brandon. Pick, I'm going to pick Brandon today. I want to talk to you afterward. I want to learn about your business and I want to see if I can use my contacts to help you. And I guarantee you that if, if we all talked, I could help you get into anybody you want to see. I'm an old guy that knows a lot of people and I'm happy to share my contacts with you. So if I can help you, I'm sure it's going to somewhere help me down the road. So I hope this, this event for you is, is worthwhile. I'm very excited to meet uh, your host and learn about LinkedIn. I think it's a great technology that we all should use. So enjoy the morning. I feel a little bit like Britney Spears when I have things like this on, so I might break into dance or song. Um, I, earlier this week, I should say, I brought my son with me to a presentation. His name's Joshua, he's 14, and I did the... I don't know. Am I there? I don't know. Something. And he was like mortified and his face turned red, so um, I'm doing a Facebook Live with us today, you guys. So this is going to be live stream, and the cool thing is this is going to be played back so we can all watch it again later. If there's things that I'm covering you want to review again, you can look at the, the playback of a video. You can watch me try to do the, what is this called? The floss? The floss. Okay, yeah. thank you. I'm not cool. I was cool at one point, and then I became a mom, right? Um, but you can watch my playback of the floss and miss, fairly miserably at that, and you can really more importantly watch what we're doing in LinkedIn. Is this going in and out? We're okay? All right. I'm having a little bit of feedback on there. All right, so what I want to do to get started is um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then I want to real, real quick go around the room and just hear your name and the company you work with, okay? But it's not going to be your life story, just the name and the company you work with because we got a pretty full house here. But I think there's always value in networking and knowing who's in the room. A little bit later, we're going to get the chance to practice an introduction to someone on LinkedIn and personalizing that introduction. So you might hear the name and the company of the person you want to meet or introduce um, yourself to on LinkedIn, so you might want to jot those down. Okay. So a little bit of my background, I'm, uh, I'm a lifelong marketer, about a year and a half. I leaned very heavily into my side hustle and launched Meller Marketing, where I help people in businesses with marketing and social media, and I specialize in LinkedIn. I've used LinkedIn as a job seeker, I've used it as a recruiter, finding talent, I've used it as a marketing representative, and now I use it pretty heavily as a brand ambassador for Meller Marketing, as a public speaker, trainer, and also for business development purposes to keep my business up and running. So that's um, really what brings me here today is to help all of you optimize LinkedIn as well. So hopefully you guys have your phones with you here today. Do you have your phones? Okay, so if you have the LinkedIn app on your phone, go ahead and bring your phone out and you're gonna have that in front of you because we're gonna look at that a couple of times throughout the presentation. And then a um, quick show of hands, how many people are on LinkedIn? Have a LinkedIn account, okay. Just about everybody. There's usually one or two people that don't and um, by the end of this presentation, hopefully I have you convinced that you wanna be on the network. So what I'm gonna do as I'm getting my slides up, I'm gonna have you go around the room. Again, if you could just say your name and the company that you're working with, okay? 
So we'll start with uh, Sheila. Sheila Denstead, Troy Chamber. Shamokin Grace Emmys and Breathing and Views. Megan Christensen, Gordon Advisors. Danielle Workman, Fit Third Securities. Andrew Sadler, Colliers International. Gina Setner, Financial Solutions of Michigan. Joan Hockenstadt, Intelligent Office. Keith Johnson, Western and Southern Life. Stuart Fairovich, CMIT Solutions. Good morning, I'm Brandon Recker for Habitat for Many, Oakland County. Christina Concord, Antina Promotions. Joe Golda, Joe's Organizing and Closets. Chuck Bersaloni, Well Strategies Financial Group. Mark Galvin, Cal for Home Loans. Diane King Brown, Keller Williams, Domain Realty. Good morning, Josh Christian, Primerica. Max Molly, uh, Mellon Market. <laughs> Eric Morton, Elite Imaging Systems. Uh, Danielle Ryder, DM Payroll Services. Scott Wyckoff, Walsh College. Tenet Froze, Main Street Bank. <laughs> Chris Caldwell, Stark Reagan, Law Firm. Uh, Noel Billamon, Sequoia Financial Group. Leah Shunia, Comcast Business. Jeffrey Waji, HR Pro, and Venom. Uh, Barry Pierce, Connecting Blocks. Scott Lawrence, Headshots by Scott Lawrence. He did my photos, by the way. I feel like my photos talk to Scott. He did Sheila's photos, too, I think, right? Yeah. Mine, too. Oh, good. Okay. Carl Manoogian, Primary Credit Agency. Mark Bigelow, Homeland yeah. USA. Matt McAnally, Grid 4 Communications. Mm -hmm. Lisa Burton, Lynchpin Legal. Stephanie Holt, um, Jordan Dabberty and Company with Keller Williams Realty. Rosemary Brooks, uh, the law firm of Ainsworth and Brooks, and Troy Abstract and Title. John Angler with her. <laughs> All right, did we get everybody? All right, so I think um, you probably saw a copy of the description in the email that you got from Sheila on the Troy Chamber. I do want to mention that this deck is available to you. The only thing I ask is that you connect with me on LinkedIn and then send me a message and I'd be happy to send you a link where you can download the slide. So what I'm trying to do essentially is get you to use the network that we're here to learn about today, okay? So that's what I ask of you. So um, we have our phones with us. If you have your laptop, go ahead and log into your laptop and you can actually kind of toggle back and forth between your laptop view and the phone view because your profile looks a little bit different in both of those areas. So kind of pay attention as we go along here. And um, a little bit later, I'm going to talk about some of my stats on LinkedIn, but as a preview for those people that are heavy users of LinkedIn, um, how many people know what the LinkedIn Social Selling Index is? Has anybody heard of that number before? It's got to be one person, a couple people in the room. Okay. So your Social Selling Index is one of the numbers that LinkedIn gives you to kind of assess how effective are you at using LinkedIn, and essentially, how effective are you at social selling? The concept of connecting with the right people, building dialogue, getting good conversations started, connecting with decision makers. And it's a scale of zero to 100. It's not a grade, it's just a scale of zero to 100. And um, I say anything above 50 is really good. You know, you're active on LinkedIn, you're using it. Uh, highest I've ever been is an 86. Right now I'm at an 84, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. If you uh, upgrade to Sales Navigator, you can get your score a little higher. So it is a tool to help facilitate the upgrade to Sales Navigator. I've heard you can't get over a 90 unless you have Sales Navigator. So just frame of reference there. But just to give you a sense of you know, my strength of using LinkedIn, I'm at about an 84 on, on the index of 100. And then um, right now, I'm averaging about 2,500 profile views in the past 90 days. If you're looking at your profile, this is gonna be one of the numbers in your LinkedIn dashboard. My numbers should be higher, you know, this is what I do for a living, but it just kind of shows my progress and the effectiveness of what I'm doing. And then right now, I mean, I'm a marketer. I'm heavy, heavily, heavily active on social media. I really don't pay very much in terms of marketing or advertising my business. I use social media to generate leads, and the effectiveness of what I'm doing is actually producing about two to three or more inquiries per week. And these are people coming to me or me responding to some of the dialogue that I'm building. It's not me doing cold calling or actively reaching out, it's just by way of being active on social media. So a little bit of, of my um, results to date. And then what we'll be covering today, we'll be talking about optimizing your LinkedIn profile, and I'll be walking you some of the steps there. We'll be talking about building dialogue with new connections. So it's not just about uh, the quantity of connections you have, it's about the quality and the type of dialogue that you're getting started. 
and I'll show you some techniques there. Then we'll be talking about the whole concept of social media karma, paying it forward, paying more attention to your network because they in turn will then pay more attention to you and to your business, okay? And then finally, we'll have a bonus section on how you can assess your LinkedIn progress over time. How's that sound? Pretty good? Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna get started. A little bit of my background. I talked to you already about the fact that I'm a marketer. I love, love, love my business. Love being self-employed. Love my family. I also love coffee, pie, and chocolate. And you guys saw the pie whipping thing that was going in the background. So one of the things I started doing a while back was I bring a pie with me to give away. Because, I don't know, pies, it's become my thing, my calling card, if you will. You know the bacon people, right? And you guys know, like, the cupcake people. There's, like, a couple people. I'm the pie lady. Okay, so you're gonna find with me on that's my thing. So what I've actually got is I've got a pie tin. I actually picked this up, it's from Michael's. Um, I'm gonna pass this around. If you'd like to enter to win the pie, I brought an apple pie with me here today, so I'm gonna do a drawing at the end, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll pass it around. If you don't like pie, that's okay. I still like you, you're a good person. You can give it to your employees or coworkers or take it home to give it to your family, okay? Bribe some people with that. All right, so um, one thing I do like to say though is um, I am an introvert at heart. And I say that because people are probably thinking, well, you're standing up in front of the room. How are you an introvert? And I'm guessing there may be one or two of you in the room that feel the same way about yourself. I figured it out. It's not a character flaw. It's just a personality uh, that I have. It's part of my personality. So I joined Toastmasters, a public speaking group, and every chance I have to speak, I speak. So for those people in the audience that are introverts at heart, what I would suggest is at the end, I'm gonna to say, do you have any questions? And I want you to think of a question to ask me. And it gets a little, you know, it feels less uncomfortable over time, but the more you ask questions in group, the more you have the chance to speak, speak, you'll get over that, okay? So I'm speaking to my introvert people out there, all right? Um, LinkedIn is my specialty, and I already kind of talked about my love of pie there. All right, so we already went through um, the introductions around the room here, but I do want to just do a quick shout out um, here and just ask for your participation. Is there anything specific you're hoping to learn here today? So can I get any volunteers from the audience? Is there anything specific you're hoping I'll cover? Anything you're hoping to learn? Yes? I just want to learn how you craft your messages to people when you reach out. How you craft your messages when you reach out on LinkedIn. And what's your favorite kind of pie, too, while we're at it? Um, I'm putting you on the spot here. Buckeye pie. Buckeye? Yeah, it's peanut butter and Ooh. Chocolate. Love it. That's a good one. I haven't heard of that. So how to craft your messages. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Yes. Someone mentioned the other day about how you could connect with people that were physically near you. Yes, we're going to show that today. Cool. Excellent. Very good. And favorite kind of pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. It's a classic. Love that one. I love all pies, though, really. Okay. So <laughs> I'm uploading photos. I'll upload one, but I want to add it. doesn't seem to like Facebook. Upload multiple photos. Yeah. Okay. There's a little, little trick to that, too. Um, if are you doing it from your personal LinkedIn or from your company page? Uh, okay. I, I think it may be a little different. I usually, if it's multiple photos, I like to upload them from my phone. And then go into the LinkedIn app and then you can edit and add tags and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Coconut cream. Coconut cream. Love it. Good pie. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, difference between Okay, so Joan was asking, and Joan's with the Intelligent Office, right? <laughs> I get a little shout out because we're going to come visit her soon. Um, so difference between personal LinkedIn and a business LinkedIn, really what you're referring to here is you have your individual account on LinkedIn, which is your personal slash professional account, and then there's a business page that you have on LinkedIn. I do see some businesses that use a personal account for their business, and I would caution you if, if that is you, that you don't use your personal account for your business. Um, it, it is something in the fine print of the LinkedIn terms of use that says that your individual profile is a person. And I'd hate to see you get that wiped out at one point. Because I could see them coming and cleaning house and saying, nope, this is Mellor Marketing. It's not a personal account. It's a business. And that goes away. That type of thing. Okay. And favorite kind of pie? Is there an ice cream pie? Oh, I'm sure there's an ice cream pie. Ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can put anything. It's basically, you just put a crust and then you put ice cream and you freeze it. Ice cream pie, go lot. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, in the back. Yep. So me. Yep. Um, I'd like to know uh, if upgrading the Sales Navigator is worth it. Okay. What's the benefits of using Sales Navigator? Okay. And favorite kind of pie? Oh, there's so many. Um, probably banana cream. Since you already took coconut, I'll You can You can pick the same. It's okay. We're not, 
I'm not giving them all away. I just want it open. <laughs> um, so the short answer to that question, when to upgrade to Sales Navigator, I haven't yet. I don't need to. Um, what I would say is that on, on average when I'm talking to people and I, they say I'm paying for premium or I'm paying for Sales Navigator, I'll say why, what are you getting out of it? I don't know, my company's paying for it for me. And I'll say cancel that, book me, and I'll help you to use LinkedIn. That's a better investment than paying for something that you don't know what you're getting the features out of. Um, if you're optimized on LinkedIn, if you're using it regularly, you really understand how they use the network, then I would say go up to Sales Navigator because then you can really fully utilize the benefits of that. Okay. Was there another hand in the back over there? Yes. Uh, generally, I, I, I've been on LinkedIn for years. I have no idea of how to use it at all. Yeah. I'm that person that's like, you know, <clears throat> LinkedIn for dummies. But, <laughs> but one of the things that I don't understand is I have uh, my business underneath my, my, my personal profile. Anytime I try to push or spread anything from my business account, I can't see it. On my personal, it doesn't pop up on my personal profile for me to share it like as a person or anything like that. Right, but are you an admin on your company page? Mm, yeah, I should be, yes. Okay, we'll look at my page when, and maybe you can look at yours while we're in here. And then favorite kind of pie? Uh, rhubarb. Rhubarb, your, strawberry rhubarb or just rhubarb? Just regular. Just regular rhubarb, okay, we'll take that. Okay, one more and then we'll get started in the back. Um, I'm interested in how do you get stalking me. 
You know, I'm like happy, like, oh good, Chuck's doing his homework. He's looking at my profile, he's working on things. So feel free to look at mine as often as you'd like there. So we're gonna start with talking about how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. And what I want you to keep in mind here is that when we're thinking about optimizing our profile, we're optimizing it for people, for human beings. But we're also optimizing it so that we can come up in searches, so that we're making it um, search friendly by the LinkedIn, the, the, the coders and the algorithms and the things that are running behind the scenes. So um, you're writing it ideally you know, for your ideal target audience. So think you know, right now, who am I trying to reach on LinkedIn? Who is that ideal target audience? For Scott, it might be an MBA um, future student. For Sheila, it might be a prospective Troy Chamber member in the future. So for whatever your audience is, think about who is that ideal target audience, and then everything on your profile should be through that lens. So as you're trying to evaluate, what do I put for my headline? How do I describe my summary? What skills do I put in? What experiences, et cetera? Think about it through the lens of why does that ideal target audience care about this? How does this help to demonstrate my knowledge, my expertise, my passion to get them to stay on my profile, okay? And then um, you want to use the maximum character count. So for example, in your summary section of LinkedIn, you have 2,000 characters total to tell us your story. Use the first person, tell us who you are. Don't just write one sentence and then go on to the next because what happens is all of these keywords and phrases that you put into your profile are gonna help you to come up in searches. So if you only put one sentence where you've got 2,000 characters to work with, you're losing some opportunities for searches there. Fill out all the fields. Just go through everything they offer there and try to fill out as many of those fields as you can, okay? Think of LinkedIn like Google. So when you think about Google, a lot of companies will spend time and money and resources on doing something called search engine optimization. So essentially making their site very search friendly so that when I go and type in pizza places in Troy, Michigan, I'm the top pizza place that comes up in the search. Your LinkedIn is the same way. You wanna come up in the top of search results for people that are looking for your products, services, expertise, okay? And on that end, um, think about the fact that redundancy works in your favor. If you look at my profile, you're gonna notice that I have certain keywords and phrases that are repeated several times throughout. If I wanna be found for LinkedIn strategy, for LinkedIn coaching, I have to use those words multiple times throughout my profile. You're gonna see them in my headline. You're gonna see I have a specialties keyword list in my summary section. You're also gonna see in each of my experience section I have a specialties keyword list. And then in my skills, I've repeated those again. Redundancy works in your favor. It is okay to be repetitive. It actually will help you to come up in more of those searches. Okay, so um, if you have your laptop in front of you and or your phone, I want you to look at these right now and look at your profile. So actually go on your profile right now and you're gonna notice there's a couple things that are a bit different between desktop and your mobile. First, your desktop, your headshot photo is left aligned. On the app, your photo is in the middle. So keep this in mind when you're looking at this header image that you have in the background. Often I look at profiles and I see a logo right in the center because they've set their profile up on desktop and then when I go on mobile, I can't see the logo, it's hidden by your face, okay? So that's why I always use, I use something branded in the background. I always put a marketing tip, a LinkedIn tip, something in here and I always put it right aligned so that you can see it on mobile and on desktop, okay? Also do keep in mind that on desktop, I can see your contact info right here. If I want to do business with you, make it easy for me. Don't make me dig and poke around and try to figure information out. Your contact info, make sure that's filled out. I also duplicate, I put my email address right in my summary and it's in the first three lines so you can really easily get a hold of me. You're gonna notice on the mobile in the app, you can't see contact information anywhere up here, okay? So you actually have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and if you know it's there, you click to expand and then you can see your contact information, okay? So thinking of your ideal target audience, they've landed on your profile, they wanna do business with you, don't make it hard for them, make it easy for them, okay? And a couple other things you're gonna notice on here, your summary statement, you've got three lines in the desktop, three lines in the mobile, but you see about 25 to 42 words here, bless you, you only see about 10 to 12 words on mobile, okay? So when we're writing our summary statement, make sure that it's front loaded, top heavy. The very first sentence has to capture their attention. And even look at yours on desktop and mobile. Are you capturing the essence of what you do in that first sentence there? Okay? 
So now moving along, I have this profile optimization checklist. I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly here today, but you can refer back to this as you're watching the playback or if you get a copy of the slides. So starting at the very top, what I like to look at is you've got two areas for images in your profile. First, let's talk about your headshot photo. What I like to look for there is pleasant, professional, smiling, you're looking forward or kind of we can see your face at least. And really important here, your face from the top of your forehead to the bottom of your chin, that, that should be about 50 to 60% of the circle. Consider the fact that nowadays about half of web traffic is occurring on your phone. And look at how tiny those faces are on your phone. So if you've got a headshot photo where it's from the top of your head all the way to your waist, you're zoomed really far back and we can't see you, okay? And then from a marketing perspective, this is kind of interesting, it's a little bit more subtle. When your headshot photo is more zoomed in, when you're about 50 to 60% of that circle of your face, when you're more zoomed in, you look more important, you look more impressive, you look more personable, because people can see you a little bit better. The further back you are, the less important you look, the less impressive you look, the more diminutive you look. I even see this sometimes when I see like a rows and rows of boardroom photos next to each other, and you see that person that's a little bit more zoomed in, and the person next to them, they're further back, and you say, well, are they just a committee member? Are they not really on the full board? Or It's just a subtle kind of thing. So zoom your photo in a little bit, so it's about 50 to 60% of the circle. And speaking of, your photo, gosh, this is like the image that you're creating for yourself and for your business. You invest time and money into website design and beautiful collateral materials and all of these wonderful things and then you send someone to your LinkedIn photo and it's a selfie that you've taken in your car or it's a picture of you with your hand around somebody at a, at a party or you're at a wedding and wearing a tuxedo or you know all of these you know I've seen poorly lit you're standing in your kitchen with the wallpaper in the background you're being a representative of your, of your company and your business. You want to put your best face forward. This is the image they get of you every time they come to your profile. Invest in a photographer. It's well, well worth it. Okay? All right, next thing I look at is this header image behind you here. And um, what I tell people is this is essentially LinkedIn is giving you a free billboard to brand yourself, to brand your business. And my guess is there's probably about half of you that have the default, which is a teal with the dotted lines and interconnected, it looks like a galaxy or something. So this is an opportunity to add some branding in. If you do not have something in the background there, go back to your office today, tell your marketing person, Brenda said I need a branded header image for my profile, what can you give me, okay? So really something that aligns with your business or your industry would be great. So for the folks here at Grid4, if you've got something where it's a picture of the building in the background with the Grid4 logo on it, or maybe it's something that the graphic designer has created with, you know, the Grid4 logo or some other product imagery or something like that, that would be a great idea. At minimum, change it from the default. You can certainly use stock photography from like Pexels or um, iStock Photo or any of those sites, you know, mountains or scenery or even color effects, but use something different than the default. Even better would be something that's branded for your business. And similar to a billboard on the side of a highway, um, think about if you're driving on the, the highway and you see that, you know, if it's a billboard for McDonald's, five for five, and you notice it the first week or so, and then after a few days you stop noticing it, right? Um, a month later, they change it, and now it's Wendy's Baconator or something, and you notice it again. So same things with your LinkedIn header image. Don't just set it once and then forget it. I like to change that header image maybe three or four times a year. Maybe talk about different products and services that your company is offering, events, you know, for, for Sheila, the Detroit Chamber, that might be something you can promote out regularly. So think about that like a billboard, okay? Give a little bit of added visibility to your business. All right, the next thing we look for is your headline. And this is the field that is right below your name. My guess is a lot of you probably have the default headline, which is job title at company. And you know the, the thing here is if it's job title at company, you're losing the opportunity to tell us a little bit about your story. So if you have your phone, I want you to do a search right now. Just search for, you can search for a job title, a business category, or, or whatever, and just do a click quick search there and then click on the search results and you're going to see a list of people that come up and in the search results you're going to notice it shows the headshot photo, it shows the headline and the area that you're in and I think how many people you have in common and that's it. So all I have to go on in the search results is your headshot photo, your headline and the area that you're in. So if I'm looking for somebody in um, you know, 
technology business development, whatever, and it says technologist at ABC company, business development at XYZ company. It's not telling me anything different, so you're not differentiating out yourself in those search results. Why not instead broaden your headline, put a couple of keywords and phrases in there that this describe what you do, what industries you serve, um, how you're helping your clients, maybe there's a brand mantra or a slogan or something else that you could put in there. Instead of saying, on mine it could say, marketing consultant at Meller Marketing. That tells you nothing, right? Instead, I say, I help people in businesses with marketing and social media. So I'm kind of telling you what I do and hopefully pulling those right people in to look a little bit further on my profile. So think about those headlines and periodically do searches for keywords and then see what other people are using in their headlines as well, kind of knowing what the competition is doing there. It does not need to match your job title. It certainly can include it, but I would say broaden that out, um, make it interesting. That's what I'm looking for there, okay? <laughs> so hopefully doing that search, I've kind of shown you the importance of that headline on there. Um, the next thing is, you know, number of connections on your LinkedIn. Really, there's not a number you should strive for. When I look at profiles, if you have more than 10 connections, it shows me that you're active. You know, the goal really should be you're growing your network all the time. Um, I don't know about you guys, but if I land on a profile and it's got like three or four connections, I kind of think, well, they're not active on LinkedIn. So you have to be growing your network in order for people to, to come to that conclusion. Underneath that, we're looking at the summary statement. And earlier, remember I said there's 2,000 characters total that you want to put into that summary statement, but you can only see three lines. Do keep in mind that most people are not going to click to show more. So the first three lines are going to be the only thing that they see. Most people won't. The right people will. They'll click to expand and read more. And you're writing this summary for the ideal target audience. You're writing it in first person. This is not the same thing you would put at the top of your resume, because remember the goal of a resume is to get a job. The goal of LinkedIn is for business networking, for doing business with other people. Maybe some job search elements, but really it's doing business and professional networking. So think about when you go to events like today and you introduce yourself, what do you tell people? What do you do? How did you get into the industry? Why are you passionate about what you do? Why are you different, better than your competitors? You know, tell us a little bit of your story in your LinkedIn summary. You've got 2,000 characters to do that. And do it in the first person. I would not say, Brenda Muller is an experienced marketer who specializes in LinkedIn. I wouldn't say that. If I walked up to you in an event, I would say, hi, I'm Brenda Muller. I help people in businesses with marketing and social media. Be a little bit more conversational about that, okay? And then in there, um, at the very bottom of your summary, if you don't have any media listed, I would highly recommend you upload some media into your summary. So for the most part, LinkedIn is a very text heavy um, profile. There's not a lot of places we can add elements to bring visual interest. This media section is one, and you'll see if you put this right underneath your summary, it actually adds some visual power that's in there. So you can upload photos, you can upload website links pointing to a page where there's a pretty picture. You can upload links to YouTube videos. You can upload blogs. Maybe you've got PDFs with your sell sheets or talking about your products and services. But I would highly recommend put a couple of items in there. It creates a little bit of visual interest and that stickiness factor, right? So when people are looking at your profile, they're like, oh, what is that? So it looks like a lemon or something. And then, you know, so they click on that and they want to read it and go a little bit deeper in there. Okay. Any questions on this before we move on? Is this making sense? You guys all awake? Does anybody need more coffee? It's quiet here this morning. Okay, we'll keep going. All right, moving down. The next section I look at, look at on your profile, oops. Next section I look at is your experience section. So I want to make sure that you've got this filled out, not just putting your employer in your job title, but again, considering the fact that writing this for your ideal target audience, I, if I want to do business with you, I want to give you a little bit of sense of what my business is. So what I like to do is start each experience section. The very first thing is a one to two sentence description. What is my company? So describe your company. Then describe what are the products and services that your company offers, okay? So this is in your experience section. You can actually um, go in and edit and add some information here. Start with the description of your company. Then talk about the products and services that your company offers. And then maybe you talk about your role. In my role of Chief Business Development Officer, I work with enterprise level clients, so you kind of define, if you want to do business with me, this matches you, you know, let's talk, that kind of thing. I might even put a call to action. I think I do have my email address in there as well. Again, 
repetitive, but I want to make it really easy for my target audience if they want to get a hold of me to do business with me. Okay. And then similar to what I did in my summary, I'm going to have a list of um, keywords, and I put this under the heading of specialties. If you look at my profile, you'll see I have specialties, and I just do a running list of keywords separated by commas. I don't write this for you as a human being to read. I don't mind if you read it, but I write it for the computer. I write it for, for my profile to be indexed to come up in search results for those keywords. Okay? You're going to notice that I do this in my summary section at the top. I do this in every one of my recent experience sections as well. Okay? So think about those keywords and phrases that you want to be found for. And then similar to the summary at the top, you can also upload media here in your experience section. So what I tell people is your summary at the top, that's the highest level of visibility for your media. Let me go back here for a second. This is the highest level of visibility. A lot of people will see this. When you go down to the experience section, this is kind of like secondary. But again, use that, fill it out, create some visual interest in there, and create some stickiness in your profile. Yes? Now, on the mobile app, yeah. you have to, uh, I, I'm looking at mine, Yeah. and all I have is this the first couple lines. Yep. You have to click on it to open it you up do. on the mobile app. Yep. Is it automatically open on the web? Uh, um, or do you have to click on it there too? You have to click on to expand it to see it out. Well, let me think about this, because if you're looking, this is an expanded view right now. I don't have my computer up in front of me. Do you have anything in your desktop, on your profile for, for media? Not for media, okay. but like I said, you know, when I, when I first glanced at it, it's <coughs> yeah. just an owner of all strategies with a time frame. I think in desktop, I, it, it it I think in desktop, you still, it I think it shows it in collapse yeah. view, but um, I would need to look at it in the desktop. But that is something really important to keep in mind. When you're building this, look at it and, you know, land on your profile, see what you're seeing, because you want to kind of know how deep do they need to dig to look at these things, but still fill it out, put a couple items in there. Good question. There was another hand. Yes. <coughs> I, in the past, um, have really been focused on business yeah. on LinkedIn, and then I was given a tip that it should be more focused on you personally, like what you are, who you are, rather than your business. So you're kind of saying lean more toward your business, which is what I've done in the past. So yeah. which, which lane should you be in? What I would say is, I mean, this is a professional networking site. It's for business, careers, things related to that. I actually, in, in the summary, I like to do a little bit of both. I like to tell about my business and then talk about myself personally. If you look at my summary, you're gonna notice I start with an overview of what my business is and what I do and why I help people, and here's the presentations and topics I do. And then towards the end, I talk about here's some personal goals, here's some things I'd like to do, and I have some inspirational quotes and mantras and things like that. So I, show, I pull back that professional exterior a bit. I bear a little bit of myself to my network, um, but talking about things that are personal to me, related to my career and to my business. Does that help? Yeah. I think definitely go, that goes along with the line of talking in the first person. You know, you want to be a human being and you want to be relatable, um, but you still, this isn't Facebook. We don't want to go there. You know, right. we want to keep things in, in kind of that, the lane of professional and career on a personal level. Good question. But I would say that's more so for your summary section. Your experience sections really should be more about your employer, you know, what you do. Okay, good questions. All right, keep going. Any, was there another hand or did that edit? I think that was it. Okay, we'll keep going there. So we've got our experience section filled out and what I would say is focus obviously on your current employer, you know, just defining that the most. I still fill these out for each of my previous employers as well because it helps me to come up in search results. I just don't spend as much time on the previous employers. Okay? If you own multiple businesses, so you can um, certainly list all of those businesses on your LinkedIn profile. You can reorganize those, so if you want your primary employer to be at the top, you can just put that at the top of, of that experience <laughs> section. And one thing I actually do is I serve on a board for an organization called Together Digital Detroit, and I have my board experience in my experience section, but I have it below Meller Marketing. Because Mellor Marketing is what pays the bills, you know, this is a board, a nonprofit um, pro bono experience that I'm getting there. Okay, good question. All right, so speaking of your employer section, I want you to look on yours right now and make sure that next to your company name, you're seeing your logo there, something along there. And if not, if you're seeing this gray building avatar, I like to say gray is not okay. If you're seeing the gray building avatar next to your experience for your current employer, that either means you don't have a company page yet or it's not properly linked to your profile. 
Okay. So if you know for certain you have a company page, go in, edit, delete the company name out and add it in and it'll link it properly in there. Okay. If you don't have a company page, highly, highly recommend setting that up. It's free to do so. Very little hoops to jump through. I think you go under the more um, your me button, scroll down to the bottom, and then there's a create a company page link in there. So super easy. Let me know if you have questions about that. This is just an example. This is one of the companies I, I'm, I help hire a wife. She does house cleaning. You know, when, when your wife is a strike, hire a wife. She, she does that kind of stuff. So I set up a company page for her. All right, moving down, the next thing I want you to look at is your skills section. So the heading reads skills and endorsements. And um, really important here, we have uh, 50 skills total that you can fill out in your skills section on LinkedIn. How many skills do you think I have on my skills section? 50, 50 right? Because profile optimization, you use all of the available fill, uh, fields, fill those out on your profile. What's even more important though than using all 50 are what are the top three? So right now I want you to look at your skills section and look at those three skills that you see. Do not click to expand. Just look at the three, and those are the ones that are pinned to the top of your skills section. Are those the three things that you wanna be known for? Are those the three things that are gonna be most relevant for your target audience? If not, you can and should consider reorganizing them. And what you wanna do is if you're in the desktop mode, I don't know if you can do this from the mobile, in desktop you click on the pencil icon, and then at the top of the page you can unpin something that's not as relevant and pin something else in its place, okay? If you're looking at your skills list and you say, well, gosh, what I really wanna be known for is event management and that's nowhere in my skills list, then you wanna click on add a new skill and add those in there, okay? If you're struggling with, gosh, I don't have 50, I can't think of 50 things that I could add in this section, do what I do. Scan for your competitors on LinkedIn, look at their profiles, look at their skills section. You will inevitably come up with 10 to 12 new skills that they, that they have on their profile that you have and you can add into your profile, okay? But again, most important are the top three. And what I like to tell people is, and this will help you remember this, I like to say people are lazy. Now, I don't really think people are lazy, but I do think that most people are not gonna click on show more. They're just not. They're gonna see the top three, they're gonna make a judgment call for you based on what they see there and they're gonna move on, okay? Now, in this section, you have skills and you have people who have endorsed you for those skills. I don't worry as much about the number of endorsements that I get. It does help you come up in searches on LinkedIn, but really what's more important is the human element. What do people, we as people see in the top three? And those are, those are helping to make that judgment call whether we see you as an expert in those areas. Okay, is this making sense? Okay. Did you guys find anything in the top three there? You might want to move around a little bit. Anybody find like Excel or PowerPoint or something? Like, like that's not really what I, I'm getting a lot of endorsements for that. And on that note, you know, I'm a big believer of social media karma. So as you're visiting other people's profiles, if you're in the skills section, just take a minute and endorse them for a few things that you know that they have expertise in, and that helps to give them a little bit of a boost, okay? All right, so moving on, the next thing I want you to look at is your recommendations section on LinkedIn. So scroll down to your recommendations, let's look at that now. First thing I like to look for is how many do you have received versus given, okay? So received are recommendations that people give you. And I'd like to see that you have received one or two in the current year. Now it's only March right now, but you can get one or two recommendations you know, in a few months here. So look at, have you received any recently? Okay, and then let's look at how many you've given. And again, I like to see that you've given one or two in the current year. What I really like to see though is that you've given a couple more than you've received. Sometimes I work with clients and I look at their profile and they have received 20 recommendations and they have not given one. What message does that send? It's all about you, it's all about how you're using LinkedIn and you haven't given one back. So think about paying it forward, helping somebody in your network, think about um, you know, the gentleman in the room who introduced Bridgeport, where is he at? Is he still here? And you talked about, you know, doing business with people. So coming to these networking events, not just to sell to, but to give business to people. So give someone a recommendation. So think about the people that you have done business with. Maybe it's your favorite chamber, the Troy Chamber. You give Sheila a recommendation and you talk about how much the Troy Chamber has helped you and your business. Maybe um, Scott, who's already left who's a photographer, maybe I give Scott a recommendation as my photographer. I'm paying it forward, I'm helping build visibility for others, 
Okay. I don't, I don't see recommendations on mine. So you may not have any recommendations yet on your profile. Okay. If you're not seeing that section in there, it's probably because you don't have any yet. So um, what I would suggest is starting by paying for it. You know, and to pay for it, let's just use Sheila as an example. You don't mind that I use her new example here, do you? So you, if you're already connected with Sheila, you would go on her profile and click on the more drop down, and there would be recommend as one of those options. Okay. So that's how you start it. Was there a hand in the back of the room? Yes. Yeah. So are you actively asking recommendations? So I do a little of both. Sometimes people just give them to me. Other times, I mean, what I would say is you do want to occasionally request recommendations. And what I would say is focus on requesting them from people that you know will give you a recommendation. If it feels awkward to ask them, they're not the right people. It's the people that are jumping up and down, that love doing business with you, that love working with you, or maybe worked with you in the past and you still have a great, um, working relationship with them, right? So think about the people that would say, hey, Brenda, if there's ever anything you need, let me know. I love working with you. You're great to work with. Actually, there is something, Stuart. Could you give me a LinkedIn recommendation? You know, that type of thing. If I am on a client engagement, working with a, um, a, a great um, organization at the end of the engagement, I might say, hey, Emily, it's been such a pleasure working with you and your team. Um, would you be able to give me a LinkedIn recommendation? And I do it right then when it's kind of fresh in their mind and we've had a great experience working with each other. What I'll actually do is I'll email them and I'll say, hey, Emily, you know, great experience working with you. Would you mind giving me a LinkedIn recommendation? It helps me as I'm growing my business to hear from customers like you. Um, and then when she replies back through email saying, yep, I'd be happy to, then I go onto LinkedIn, go onto her profile, and I click on request a recommendation so it kind of serves it out to her. But she knows it's coming from me. Does that help? So you make the request on LinkedIn? Yes. Yeah, there's not, um, unfortunately, on Facebook, I can send you my reviews page, and you can go and click on it and go right to that. On LinkedIn, I can't send you a link outside. I have to be in LinkedIn to request the recommendation. Yeah. So there's nowhere on that section that I can put any explanations that, you know, I'd love to recommend you, and I'd love to get a recommendation. However, compliance does not allow this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you, could you do that through email or just by phone? Yeah, I, that's okay. what I ended up having to do. Yeah. But there's like nothing on that section because it comes up that there are no recommendations. It would be nice to have an But can't, let me ask you this, though, Chuck. Couldn't you get a recommendation? When you get them from somebody on LinkedIn, you have the opportunity to review it and then approve it before it goes on your profile. I do, but could, I, could your but compliance, I can't approve it. But couldn't your they compliance, all, couldn't you grab a screen capture and give it to them? Okay, cool. No. Sorry. Sorry, I can't help you out. Yeah, no, it would, it would, it would, <laughs> I got nothing for it. You could put an explanation <laughs> on there that why there are no recommendations. Uh, I don't you can, really can't do suck. Anything, can I do just, any from <laughs> previous <laughs> lives or careers or anything? Okay. So even if it's from before you were in the financial services industry, yeah. you should work in marketing. We're much more fun. Yeah, we, <laughs> see, and that, not only can I not accept the recommendation, I can't. You can't give? Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys can go refill your coffee while we're talking about this part. <laughs> All right, and then the other thing I like to do is recommendations. This is the recommendations I am given on LinkedIn. I also merchandise these. I use these in my marketing materials. I use these in my proposals. Um, I might use these on my website as well. These are public. They're attached to somebody's profile, but they're public on LinkedIn. Anybody can see them, so it's kind of fair game to use for marketing purposes. Okay? All right, so this is a little bit of homework. Again, what I like to do is focus on social media karma, paying it forward, helping others. So start by thinking, who is one person in your network you could ask for a recommendation? You can even do it right now while we're in here. Send them a recommendation request. What I like to do is I might say, hey, Sheila, it was great speaking at the Troy Chamber group today. Could you give me a recommendation based on my, um, my speaking skills and specifically talk about X, Y, Z? So give them a little bit of a thought starter. Sometimes people are like, yeah, Chuck's a great person. I know I can't use you. But um, I'll use Maxwell. Yeah, Maxwell, he's a great person to work with. Yeah, you're, you're giving me speed bumps in my presentation here. Maxwell's a great person, but sometimes people like to, um, what, what do you want me to say about you? You know, like give them a little bit of a thought starter. You know, for example, this might be, is Scott still here? He stepped out. I'll use him when he gets back in the room. Yeah. Here's a question. I may have been going through my recommendations as we're talking, and maybe I had recommended someone under a prior role they had. Okay. Do you recommend them again? Again, how does that work? I don't know that you can give them another recommendation. I think when you've given them one, I think the option is removed. I could be mistaken. I have not been asked that question before. Yeah, but if you've given them one before, you've given them one. So. Yeah. But they may be in a different role now. You should try giving that person another recommendation and let me know what happens. Uh, 
that. All right, so these are good. And then the other thing is, if you're struggling with how do you describe yourself, look at what people say about you in the recommendations. That might give you some themes and some keywords and phrases that you can use as you're describing yourself in your summary, okay? So think about that. All right, any other questions there before we move on? And what I like to do in here, I think one other mention I had is focus on strategic recommendations, meaning focus on people who have large networks who could say nice things about you, focus on them. Because the great thing about recommendations on LinkedIn is these are viewable on the individuals who have given you the recommendations as well as on your profile. So um, I had, you know, do you guys know Roy Sexton? Roy's like the, you know, awesome legal marketer. So he's given me one, I've given him one, but we can see each other's on our profiles. He's got a really large network, very well known in the marketing community. So that's just an example there. All right, so next thing I want you guys to look at, if you're in your desktop view, you can look at see contact info. If you're in your mobile phone, um, the app, you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of your profile to see the contact information. And even then, I don't think you're going to see exactly everything that we see here on the screen. Those people that are on the desktop, or if you'd want to just follow along with me on the screen. So what happens here, if you click on see contact info, this box pops up and it's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on over here. So it starts with your LinkedIn URL. Hopefully this is simplified. If at the end of your URL you see 1A, OB, QC, some gobbledygook stuff, we're gonna fix that in a minute here. But we'll, we'll skip that for now. Underneath that, you have the opportunity to add up to three websites. Most people will put their company website in, and then in the drop-down option, they choose company. And then what happens is it'll say mellermarketing.com company, company website, I think, right next to it. What I do is I choose the word other, and then I can add a couple of keywords in to describe what is my company, okay? So instead of choosing company as the website type, choose other, and then when you choose other, you can add a couple keywords in there, okay? You have three websites. Remember earlier I said fill out every area of your profile, use every space they give you. So what I've done is I put my main web page where I say LinkedIn and social media coach. I've also put you know other things that I'm trying to promote about myself and my business right now. So I'm putting a specific web page in for events and presentations. Here's my upcoming events. I chose other and then I put upcoming events. And then I put in presentations, book me as a presenter. So I'm specifically promoting products and services as well as my website homepage. I could also put a blog in there if I wanted. I could put my YouTube channel. So think about three website sections that you could put in there. What are the three websites that you could promote for your business? Okay? And don't choose company. Choose other because then you can write some keywords going in there. That helps with uh, profile optimization. Underneath that, I put my, my mobile phone number as a consultant. I want to be easy to get a hold of if you want to do business with me. Only my first level connections can see this. My address, I don't have a, um, a place yet. Maybe in the future it might be an intelligent office or some other place like that. But right now, I just say based in Macomb County, services provided throughout Michigan and online. You may want to put your business address in there. Grid 4 Communications, XYZ, Troy, Michigan, you know the address in there. Um, your email address, look and see what email address you have listed in there. I like to see your work email address. If I see a Gmail or an AOL or a Hotmail or something like that and I want to do business with you, remember earlier I said that only about half of people go on LinkedIn monthly, you know, once or more a month. So if they know you're not checking LinkedIn regularly, they may, they may want to send you an email if they want to do business with you. And they might feel kind of funny about sending it to your Gmail or your AOL. So I would change that to your primary being your work email in there. And then if you're active on Twitter, if you are active on Twitter, I'm gonna say that one more time, if you are active on Twitter, not if you have a Twitter account, you never check it. If you are active on Twitter, put your Twitter in here. And periodically check that, make sure the link works. Um, the other day I was looking at someone's account and I pointed it to their Twitter and the Twitter was um, not valid because they had changed their username. So make sure your Twitter link actually works in there. Five minutes to go? All right, we gotta go faster here. Um, edit public profile and URL, I'm just gonna, Really quickly pause on here. Edit public profile and URL at the top of your screen. What I like to say is blue shows us you. Make sure you have all of these buttons toggled over to blue. Okay? So maximum visibility there. Um, building dialogue with new connections. So um, you guys know Inigo Montoya. He does a really great job of, of the great elements of a LinkedIn invitation. We're going to practice this with each other here. So he says, Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. He has a polite greeting. He has his name, 
He has a relevant personal link and he's managing expectations. Now you're not going to tell them you're going to kill them on LinkedIn, but you also should stop sending out invitations that don't have a personal note in them. So from this moment forward, you guys promise you will always send a personalized invitation, okay? This is going to help you to build dialogue with your connections and this is how you do it. So I did a quick check, check um, for people in the Troy Chamber, people I'm not yet connected to, and I found several names. Now do not click on the connect button here. If you do, it sends that invitation off and you don't get the chance to personalize. Same thing in mobile, if you click on these little icons here, it sends the invitation off, you do not get the chance to personalize. Instead, you wanna click on their name to go on their profile. And I know I'm on the profile when I can see the header image behind them, okay? Whether it's a teal blue or a picture. Then I want to click on the connect button. Some people, myself included, I've changed my default button. It no longer says connect, it says follow. So if you don't see follow, if you don't see connect here, click on the more and you'll see the connect button, okay? But be on their profile, click on connect, and then what you're going to do is you're going to personalize the invitation. You're going to click on add a note. So with the elements I like to look for, hi, first name, have we met or not, if we did meet, I remind them where. If not, I look at their profile, find one to two things that we have in common or that are interesting to me about their profile, and that's what I put in the invitation. It's all about them. I don't say, I, I looked at your LinkedIn profile, it's horrible, you need to book me for your LinkedIn trainer. <laughs> I don't say, hey, I work with a printer and I'd love to meet you for coffee, we've got a high volume capacity, blah, blah, blah. I don't sell, sell, sell on the invitation. The invitation is all about you. Um, hi, Andrew, we haven't met, but I see that we're both fellow members of the Troy Chamber, let's connect on LinkedIn. It's all about that person. It's not about you and it's not about what you're selling to them. The invitation is all about them. Ask for the connection and then I send it. So in this case, hi Amy, we haven't met, but we're both in Metro Detroit and we both share experience in marketing leadership and several common connections. Let's connect on LinkedIn. You're trying to entice them to get them to accept it. After they accept it, then you might follow up with, Hi Amy, thanks again for accepting. Now I do a soft sell. My business is Meller Marketing. I help people and businesses with marketing and social media, specializing in LinkedIn. Let me know if I can be of assistance to you. Also tell me a bit about what you do. So right away I'm putting my cards on the table, but I'm also saying what do you do? How can I do business with you? I'm getting reciprocal right away. On mobile, I want you guys to follow along with me. If you have your phone, Pull out your phone right now. If you're not yet connected with me, search for me on LinkedIn, Brenda Meller, M-E-L-L-E-R. And then remember, we do not click on the, the little people button. You wanna be on my profile. So click on my name to go on my profile. If you're already connected with me, look at one of your neighbors, get their name, and search for them on LinkedIn, okay? On your mobile phone. When you're on the mobile phone, you do not click on connect like we do on desktop. Instead, we click on the more button or you might see three dots that are over there, okay? So on their mobile, on your mobile, on their profile, you're gonna look for the more button or three dots. When you do that, a menu of options comes up and one of those options is personalized invite. Are you guys seeing that? Okay, so now, same formula, you personalize the invitation. Hi, first name, we met today at the Troy Chamber, let's connect on LinkedIn. So it might be, hi, Brenda, we met today at the Troy Chamber, you were amazing in your presentation, let's connect on LinkedIn. Or whatever, you know, fill it in. But just put something in there, a little note in there. I'm trying to get you in the habit of getting that dialogue going there. Um, when we are done with that, when you have sent that off, I want to show you guys a new party trick, and this is the find nearby option that somebody was asking about earlier, okay? So once you've hit send, the next thing I want you guys to do on your phone, okay? On your phone, in the very bottom of your menu, you're going to see the icon with the outline of the two little people. Click on that icon. Okay? You guys doing this? Okay, click on the icon. And then at the top, you're going to see three things in the middle here. I want you to click on Find Nearby. Okay? Click on that and then set your phone down in front of you and just let it sit there for a minute. It's going to percolate. And what's going to happen here, make sure that your Wi-Fi is enabled, your location services are enabled, set their phone down, just let it sit there for a minute. Because other people that are here in the room right now, that are in this area, that have Find Nearby, you're going to see them and we can make quick connections with everybody here in the room. Okay? So again, walking you through that, you clicked on the icon of the two little people. Okay? At the top, you clicked on Find Nearby. And then this screen is going to come up 
and just let it sit because what needs to happen is everybody's Wi-Fi needs to kind of wake up and know that there's other phones in the room, we're here at the same time, and we can we can connect with each other. Okay? Are you guys seeing this? Is it coming up? Is it coming up for you? Yes, no? Do you have your location services on? All right, so now, now if we all agree, I would like to say personalize every invitation, but this is the one time I say it's okay not to personalize. Yeah. So if you all agree, we all know we're in the room. This is only showing people that are in the room in this instance of the app right now. If you all agree, we're going to just accept these invitations, then go ahead and connect with each other right now. Fire out those invitations and then watch to see the invitations that are coming in. And then you're going to quickly connect with people who are here in the room with you. Okay? Scott, I was talking about you the whole time you were gone. I was going on and on. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. No, it was bad. All right, so I'm going to keep going just for a few more minutes to wrap up, and then we're going to do some, some questions here. But um, if you guys need some help with that, I'll stick around and help you a little bit more on that after. Um, I do have a technique for screening in invitations for people that we don't know. So you know those invitations from people that you know, what do you guys do with those? You probably ignore them or look at their profile and then you make a judgment call. What I do is every invitation that comes to me, I will screen them in. And I do this in the desktop. I click on My Network, Manage All. And then underneath it, I can click on Message and send them a message before deciding whether or not to connect. I might just do a quick note that says, Hi, Scott, thanks for the invitation. Have we met Brenda Miller? It's more polite than saying, Hey, Scott, who the heck are you and why did you send me an invitation? Um, what I'm trying to do here is build dialogue, screen in intentional invitations, and screen out the people that just click on connect, 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 that don't really want to connect with me. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, if you send me an invitation and you didn't personalize, you're going to get my long version of this, which is, hi, thanks for the invitation, tell me where we met, nice to meet you, here's my LinkedIn group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you want the long version, let me know, or just send me a message, okay? But the short version would just be, hi, have we met, and give them a chance to respond there. Social media karma, we're going to finish this off and then um, open it up for some questions here. So pay it forward first. I've been talking about this throughout. Give recommendations, talk to other people, engage with their posts on LinkedIn. Pay it forward always before you post your own status update about yourself. So start every visit to LinkedIn on your homepage. Read through your homepage. Like things that resonate with you. If you think, see something particularly compelling, click to add a comment to it, and comment with five or more words. Five or more words helps to wake up the LinkedIn algorithm and says people are talking about this post and it will keep that post in the homepage feed longer. I do this technique both when I comment on people's posts or if somebody replies to one of my posts and says great article, I comment back with five or more words. So five or more words whether you are posting or if you are commenting back to someone, okay? So starting there on the homepage, I also like to engage with people who have really large followings on LinkedIn because that helps to increase profile views. So those of you who are a little bit more advanced, you know that you can look in their article section and see how many followers they have. That shows you the size of their network. Um, my never technique. So I guarantee if you use this technique for status updates, you will never post the same way ever again. It's an acronym. N stands for news. So when you're posting a status update, think about if you were dropping the Wall Street Journal in front of me, I'm only going to read that if I'm interested in what you have to say. I'm not going to read everything, okay? So news, what do they care about? What are you sharing with them? The E is engage. You're engaging by tagging people and or organizations or adding hashtags. If you have your phone with you, take a picture of me presenting and use this as an example of the Neva technique as I'm going through here. So E, you would tag, you would say, thanks to at Sheila Denstadt of the at Troy Chamber for booking at Brenda Meller. She is an amazing speaker. I learned so many phenomenal tips today. Here's a picture of her presenting. Speakers, we have large networks. When you tag us, you get the benefit of my 10,000 followers seeing your status update. I will reply back. I will comment and I will say, hey, if you're not yet connected with Christina, make sure that you visit her profile and send her an invitation to connect and tell her Brenda sent you, okay? I'll give you guys a little bit of a boost in your profile view. So you engage by tagging. The V is the visual. Take pictures. When you're at presentations and seminars, take pictures. Tag those people in your posts. And the A is the call to action. What do you want them to do after reading your post? 
you want them to add a comment below? Do you want to tag somebody in the post? Do you want to say, what do you think? Okay? So try this technique. In the next few slides, I have a few examples of this NEVA technique in place. This is the other day I uploaded a document and I shared that document. So my news is, you know, here's share the attached with someone in career transitions is something I shared at another Troy Chamber event. I engaged by tagging Sheila Tracy in the Troy Chamber. The visual is the document. And the A I said, share with someone in career transition. This post got 3,500 views, 43 likes, 15 comments. Okay? So that's just one example. Here's a a couple of examples of the five or more words in the response. So every time someone responds to that post, I do a comment back of five or more words. Every single time, five or more words, okay? Um, this is another one. I shared a tip. This one got 2,300 views with that Neva technique. A Friday shout, I do these every Friday. Sheila may or may not be my Friday shout for today. I haven't done it yet, but you may or may not be getting the Friday shout today. Hey, yo. <laughs> and they, you know, this one got 1,100 views. This technique works. It gets a lot of profile views. It gets a lot of network engagement, okay? So post a daily status update. Try to post at least once a week. Um, if you're struggling with what to share, you know, you can post conferences you attend, articles that you're reading, information from your website, etc. So those are some examples. This is in my deck if you'd like to review those more. Assessing your progress. I know we're getting tight on time, Sheila. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wrap this up really quick here. Talking about your LinkedIn dashboard, if you're on your profile or on your phone, you can see this right now, three numbers to help assess your progress. The first is how many times people have viewed your profile in the past 90 days. The second is your last post, how many views it got. And the third is how many times you've come up in search appearances. My number should be higher. Otherwise, why are you paying me? Well, you're not really paying me today, but you know what I mean, mm -hmm. right? Um, past 90 days here, just focus on the trend line and focus on where there are peaks. The peaks in profile views, you did something right that day. You've got a good post or good engagement, focus on those. And watch on that trend line over time and try to kind of focus on increasing your profile views over time. This is my LinkedIn social selling index. I do have a web page on my um, website, mellermarketing.com slash mylinkedinssi where it's a quick link, but you can also just Google LinkedIn Social Selling Index. It'll tell you your number, and it'll tell you the four categories that make up that number, okay? All right, and this is your homework. I'm not gonna read through this. I am gonna end with this and just say, if you do everything that's on this homework list, feel free to take a picture of it if you want, or message me on LinkedIn. I'll send you the deck, and you can review the whole thing. If you do all of your homework, message me on LinkedIn. I will do a complimentary once over on your LinkedIn profile, and I'll give you some pointers, okay? So that's my offer for all of you. Okay. All right. So Python is it floating around still? No, we didn't get on this side. It never came over. Oh, it never came over. It was like all the people on the my my left side of the room wanted to keep the pie for themselves. All right. So while we're um, waiting for that to go around, did you have a drawing you want to do? Oh, I, I didn't know if there were any questions. Yet. How are we on time? I mean, I can stay for a few more minutes, but I know we had a 9:30 stop, so I can it's do. Help to everyone here. Okay. If you guys want to stay, we'll do a couple minutes of questions. Is that okay? If you need to leave, go ahead and leave. Scott, you've been holding your hand for a while. No, so I got a question. So what's the value of a view? So what's the value of a view? Yes. What's the value of a view? So if you've optimized your profile and you're writing it for your ideal target audience, you're selling your products and services, so you might be talking about Walsh College and why you should go to Walsh College to earn your degree. Right. Um, getting people to view your profile, you're bringing them into kind of call it your sales funnel. Okay. And you're describing yourself to them, and then you're making yourself relatable, personable. They might reach out and say, hey, Scott, I'm thinking about going to Walsh for my degree. Can okay. you help? Right? Okay. That's the problem. I mean, it, it depends on what are your goals on LinkedIn. If your goals are to sell products and services, the power of you is you're having an audience read about you and okay. your products and services. If it's finding a job, it's you know doing other things like okay. that. Okay, the reason why I was asking is I noticed that you have people that do likes and you have people that make comments. Yeah. And even though those sometimes may not be a lot, yeah. with, when you have 3,500 views, you wonder then what and, and how the people that go to view that right. are looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then, then the cool thing too is anytime you like or, co or comment on something, it goes on your timeline, okay. so your network sees that. Okay. So the views may be partially people who I'm not even connected with. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Good question. All right, any other questions? No other hands? Okay. Else? Nothing else? Did we cover all the questions you guys asked in the beginning? Did you feel like you learned something today? Yes. Did, everybody learn, did anybody not learn anything? Because you'll get the pie if you didn't learn anything. <laughs> 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 Whatever, you're lying. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I can't, you know, I'll, I'll pull like someone I know and they'll be like, oh, you know Scott, you know? 
Watch this <laughs> Joe. Joe! Where's Joe? You must be present to win. Is Joe here? Yes. Oh, Jill. I'm sorry. Joe. Joe? Joe. Joe. Okay. I'm, I'm having a hard time. Here you go. You might have the Facebook Live now. And thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to Sheila and, and to the Grid 4 folks as well. Thank you to everyone who appreciate coming.